from the book, The China Study. And I just randomly opened the book, and this is actually principle number five. Nutrition can substantially control the adverse reactions of noxious chemicals. And so, I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you, but there's, it's, there's a widely held perception that cancer is caused by toxic chemicals that make their way into our bodies in a sinister way. Um, but here's the thing. The assumption is, is that meat would be safe to eat if it didn't have those unnatural chemicals in it, like the antibiotics and hormones, right? You know, we, we've been, you know, uh, the media has been really pumping this, that, you know, the meat these days have hormones and antibiotics in the farm animals, right? Which, you know, they do, and that's not beneficial for us. But here's the thing, the real danger of meat, however, is the nutrient imbalances, regardless of the presence or absence of those nasty chemicals. Long before modern chemicals were introduced into our food, people still began to experience more cancer and more heart disease when they started to eat more animal-based foods, right? And another example is like this potato chips, right? So we think uh, another chemical carcinogen uh, concern surrounds I'm probably not gonna say this right, acrylamide, which is primarily found in processed or fried foods like potato chips, right? And so the, the implication is that if these potato chips, if we remove this chemical from, the potato, from these potato chips, then these potato chips would be safe to eat and they would continue to, you know, and, and they would be healthy, right? But that's, we all know potato chips are not good for you. So even though they continue to be highly unhealthy, processed slices of potato drenched with fat and salt. So many of us want a scapegoat. We don't want to hear that our favorite foods are a problem simply because of their nutritional content. So it's, you know, the foods that we're eating, regardless of whether they have hormones or antibiotics in them, certain foods are just, they just don't have a nutritional content. And especially if you eat tons of them, you're gonna cause a lot of inflammation. Um, so regardless of what, what everybody says that, oh, animal protein, we need, we do need animal protein, don't get me wrong. Don't, I'm not saying we need to be vegetarian, but we don't need excess amounts of animal protein. That's a myth. Um, and so high excess protein causes inflammation in your body and that causes degeneration, acceleration of degeneration. So you basically start to rust even faster when you eat a ton of animal protein. You temporarily feel good, but long-term wise, we see patients, our, our patients are in the range of age between 50 and uh, eight, actually, I would say 90, 50 and 90 years old. So more in the you know baby boomer uh, generation. And we are seeing the effects of high animal protein. Um, this is 20, 30, 40 years down the road. This is not like, you know, next year, five years. Um, but we do see some 30 year olds eating excess protein and within a, a few months, their bodies are starting to shut down. They generate so much inflammation. So this is not my opinion. This is the, one of the largest nutrition studies ever done. There's never been a larger nutrition study done. Complicated, uh, it doesn't have to be complicated, but if you find it complicated and you just want the solution, you just wanna get your, back, your, your, your body back into gear, being able to live a high quality of life, get your organs functioning better, we can help you. Contact us to schedule an initial exam today.